Hi, my name is Jake Rockwitz, and this screencast is to help you finish installing the Webform module. Um, I'm starting off with all the Webform submodules installed, but it's definitely important that you look over the submodules and get familiar with them. The two important ones that you should start with is the UI. The core Webform module doesn't have a UI, so you want to enable the Webform UI. And you also would, should check out the examples, which just gives you kind of an overview of all the elements available and features available in the Webform module. And then you can gradually explore the other submodules, which will have some dedicated screencasts that you can also look over. The other thing that's really important besides the submodules is to install the third-party libraries. These are basically JavaScript libraries that enhance form elements. And you can go over to the help section and you can get this useful drush command. And here's all the libraries that are being installed with an explanation of why. The simplest explanation here would be, you know, for example, the time picker is to provide a polyfill for HTML time elements. Um, I would like to show you how to install them. I've been doing it already here, so I'm going to do it again. And you run Drush Web Form Library Download, and it'll run out and get all the libraries and put them in your library directory. Saves a huge amount of time. Great argument for why you should use Drush on your site. Um, now, if you don't install these mods, which I'm going to do is run the remove commands. It's going to delete these libraries, which is fine. I'm going to bring me to the next part that I want to show you is the status report, because this also helps you understand what's going on on your site and how the Webform module, what issues you might have. I'm going to scroll down. You're going to see there's it's warnings that you're using a CDN for these libraries. So the Webform module out of the box, if you don't install these libraries, will go out to a CDN and link to it, and your site will work. I don't recommend going live with you know using external libraries. But you can. You can even disable this warning so that you, when you come to status report, it's fine with it. You can go down here and check use CDNs, and it won't give you any warnings. Um, continuing on with the status report, it does track what HTML, how your, what HTML email provider you're using to send emails. Um, out of the box, the web form module does support HTML emails, but if you use something like the SMTP module or the HTML mail system module with Swift Mail. This, this status report will tell you what you're using. It just helps me debug issues if you're having any with sending HTML emails. The last item is that it's strongly recommended that you use private file uploads for all your file upload elements just to prevent people from taking advantage of using your site to host files and stuff like that. There's a core issue that's been posted about this. And you can actually just save if you don't, you want to support public file uploads, you can go into the admin settings and say, I'd like to support public file uploads. So moving on, we've looked at libraries. Another thing you can do, and I'm going to jump back to the main module page, is you can install additional contrib modules to provide enhancements to the Webform module. I'm calling these add-ons because they add on functionality to the Webform module, and I've created this curated page of mod Drupal modules that I recommend installing to provide additional functionality. And the first one is Drush CMI tools, which just helps you import and export your forms. Two really big ones is spam protection and capture and honeypot are strongly recommended, and both these modules should be enabled. And you can, you know, decide where you want honeypots and where you want to put a capture element. Um, there are still some old YAML form modules listed here so that you can go into those issues and ask the maintainer to convert it to web form and I'm making a note for SMTP support if you want to use that for mail and another library I really like to call out is client-side validation I think that's a very important library to have available to your web forms and make it easier for your users to fill them out and not have to post back to the server there's a note here to install the token module the web form module does support tokens everywhere this just makes it a little easier to get a list of all the tokens that are available that's about it for installing the module. I hope you enjoy using it, and please watch the other screencasts to get more familiar with the new Web4 module. Thanks again.